The Montgomery County Master Gardener Program is based at the Agricultural History Farm Park in Durwood, Maryland. Master Gardeners are trained volunteers of the University of Maryland Extension. Master Gardeners offer educational workshops, plant clinics, a speaker's bureau, demonstration gardens, a helpline, and therapeutic horticulture. Pack a Sandra, now I bring it every time. Volunteers Lisa Diamond and Wendy Ban run the therapeutic horticulture program. Hey, I never run out of it. Right. Overseeing 21 facilities and more than 100 volunteers. Let's find out more about how nature inspires both volunteers and recipients. Master Gardeners, which are part of the Extension Service in Maryland for our county, um, has a program, it's been about 20 years that it's been going on, and the main focus is working at facilities throughout the county, assisted living and nursing homes, and we come with a program once a month with a lead of a program, and we bring flowers from our garden and flowers from the beds at Durwood that we grow specifically for this and we prepare a program to bring them back closer to nature than they can get, especially if they're wheelchair bound and not able to get down into the dirt. And uh, we try to reach their senses and uh, we spend about an hour with them once a month and it's called Garden Club and I think they love it. Okay. So we're talking about uh, sunshine today, Ooh, which we've been having a lot of lately. <laughs> part of our program is an educational portion and the other part is making an actual project. The sun is a natural source of light and energy for plants. Plants are the biggest consumer of solar energy. We're trying to touch their all of their senses. So with sight, the flowers are beautiful. With touch, you know the textures, um, their sense of smell, the food. We, we bring in most of our facilities. We bring treats or some kind of a snack that relates to the um, topic that we're working on. So it's, it's really just trying to engage them, engage their memories. I had roses. I had the most beautiful roses, that's what I had. And they came in colors, all the beautiful colors. But this, this makes me feel very good. It's very pretty. My mother had good wallflowers too. That was in New Hampshire. I just love to do it, and the people are so nice. They're so kind, helpful to you. After I retired, I decided I needed to keep busy, so I went into the Master Gardening Program. Um, I've always loved flowers, and I've always worked with older people, so it was a perfect match to do this uh, with, with the residents here at Raphael House. They tell us they look forward to this every month and you you see how engaged they are it's whereas sometimes you know they just sort of sit and but this way they interact with each other they have fun arranging the flowers so i like i like the joy that we bring to them We provide all of our services for free. We are reimbursed up to a minimal amount, a few dollars a person for materials. A lot of that is just extra decoration materials or a, a, some kind of something we might buy to accompany things. But all the greatest extent, we've grown things in our yards. And we, like I said, we have beds up at Durwood, which is where the Extension Service Office is at the Agricultural History Farm Park on Moncaster Road. And we have wonderful beds there on purpose. We grow the flowers that we think and greens that will be wonderful in projects. <laughs> so we have, have a variety. I have a, we have small projects, possibly this big, about that round. So these will fit nicely and we'll cut them down. We have some zinnias. I'm one of two people that run the therapeutic horticulture beds here in the demonstration garden in Durwood, Maryland. We have three beds that we use here and we grow flowers for use in therapeutic horticulture projects. Uh, that's the purpose for which you grow the flowers. They're pretty, but we don't grow them to be pretty here. We want them, people to pick the flowers and take them to nursing homes, senior citizen centers, and other places where the residents use them to make various arrangements and holiday-related projects and things like that. We start in very late March when it's freezing cold, and we go until sometime in October when the weather tells us we're done. 
Um, and we have a combination of perennials and annuals, so some of the work at the beginning is grooming the perennials, nursing them back in, and then sometimes it's planting new annuals, planting seeds, stuff like that, and then nurturing them over the course of the year as they come in. A variety of different types of things. This is Artemisia, and it's really just for foliage. It's not flowers. It looks much prettier in the spring, but there still has it's nice sort of background for projects. Uh, these are everyday zinnias. Uh, we grow them from seed. So this is another one of our beds with a wide variety of flowers. Uh, and this year they have done spectacularly because I think of all the rain. Uh, we've had about 14 inches of rain in the last month and it's been great. Um, so these are gomphrina uh, or bachelor buttons, uh, which are annuals and which are just gorgeous. And every week I come back and there are more and more of them. It's just amazing. Uh, these are verbena. The people that work on the projects, they come and pick them. And there's a, a volunteer right here today picking flowers for a project that she's doing later this week. I'm Paula Brooks and I lead the group at uh, Wilson House in Asbury Methodist Village in Gaithersburg. Uh, so they have to come up here and get them. We don't, we don't deliver. Also at the demonstration garden are beds managed by therapeutic horticulture for children with autism. Yeah, this is actually, we consider this a 4-H garden. These, the children who come from CSAC, which is the Community Services for Autistic Adults and Children, and they go to school there. Okay, down here. Wow, how about that? You did it. We started off with two beds, and several years ago we got a third bed. Beans. Beans. We prepare the garden. The kids help us prepare it. We plant seeds and we plant some plants. Then they weed and water and harvest. Thank you for helping us. These are two varieties of cherry tomatoes. These don't show, they've been picked. The boys just picked them. But these are purple. They're a black cherry and they're really sweet. And the other ones on the other side are called sun gold and they are absolutely delicious. Another arm of therapeutic horticulture exists at Holiday Park Senior Center in Silver Spring. It's called, simply, the Plant Room. This is the Holiday Park Plant Room. It has been in operation for 20 plus years. We have two teams of volunteers here. Most of us are master gardeners, not all of us. Um, we're all volunteers and um, we serve a very diverse group of people at the senior center here. There's um, a lot of different racial groups, different ages, um, um, people who know about plants, people who don't know about plants, and we propagate plants for them, sell them at very inexpensive prices. I'd like to welcome you to my propagation table. And what we have here are some cuttings of coleus. So we take these cuttings and what I'll do is I'll just punch a little hole in this soil. I will put it in here, tuck in some soil. We will water this, give it a lot of TLC, get it ready for sale. And then the money from that sale goes to support the facility here. And we also act as a mini plant clinic. We have some reference books here, and um, people often come in and ask us questions. Um, we don't only sell plants. We, we try to get people enthusiastic about growing things, and we give them advice when they ask. You come anytime we're open, okay. just look around and okay. anything that you like and All right. you know, okay. ask us about questions. Uh, we teach each other at the same time. Okay. And now we roll it. They're making a little holder to support plants that are floppy. Right, this time of the year plants are getting very leggy and this is, this is perfect for it. And these are pretty pricey when you buy them, so this is a great um, do-it-yourself um, idea. This place is unique. Um, I happen to volunteer in an assisted living facility too, and it's a completely different population. The population um, that comes to the Holiday Park Senior Center are largely ambulatory. As Linda said, it's quite diverse, so we have lots of people who speak Spanish and Chinese and just all different languages. 
Um, sometimes they know nothing about plants and sometimes they know lots. They bring their memories of having gardened in their, in their home countries. Um, many of them have gardens here. If they live in apartments, they have them on patios and on terraces and they are enthusiastic. Um, many people just come to learn and it's a terrific experience just to interact with these people because they are enthusiastic, they are interested in what we do, um, and they just come to look. We're all set. As you can see, Therapeutic Horticulture is a unique program here in Montgomery County. To learn more about it, go to this website.